I want to end this segment on a point that Kathleen started to raise, and that is youth unemployment. I mean, we see national unemployment slightly below 8%. Youth unemployment almost double, around 14%. We hear all these stories about kids having a tough time and graduate through university, can't get a job. Should this be a priority for, uh, for government, John? And if so, what should they be doing? Look, it's a priority for it's a, it's a problem for every government everywhere in the world. And every government everywhere in the world tries to fix it. And you know what? No government anywhere in the world is all that good at doing it. Again, I'm a journalist, so I'm supposed to look at both sides of it. On the one hand, yeah, if you put money into youth unemployment, if you put money into education, if you put money into summer jobs, uh, that helps. But it also then takes money out of the economy, money that private sector employers won't have to hire students in summer jobs or to hire apprentices. Um, so you, have the, you always have this push and pull. Some people on the right would argue, don't spend any money on youth at all. Just let employers go out there and hire people. Those are the long-term jobs that allow them to climb the, the ladders. Others say, pour huge amounts of money in, into youth uh, employment issues and you'll get a, a, a better educated uh, and more progressive workforce. But you may have fewer dollars available later on, on down the road for private sector employers well, to given, hire those students. Given those two polar opposite choices, I want each of you now to be the Minister of Finance. A, is youth unemployment a priority in the budget that you're bringing down? And if it is, B, what would you do? Scott? Um, if it was me, the answer would be yes. And I, I, but I want to take one step back because I think this actually raises an issue that's a big policy change but that's potentially coming. There's been a consensus for a number of years of the way you build budgets and build growth is you, you, know, you sort of build an environment, right? You sort of keep your taxes low, you keep interest rates low, you have uh, strong social programs, and then you let the private sector flourish. And that's worked. I think that increasingly with a lot of seniors, high youth unemployment, skills gaps, we're going to see government say, are we going to have to actually treat different demographics differently? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to build some tailored programs? The precise opposite of what John was saying. So if I was the Minister of Finance, I would say my bet is in the next 15, 20 years, strong, modern economies are going to start investing in youth and they're going to create incentive programs for the private sector to give those kids skills, to give them on the job training, and then that's going to allow them to unlock their potential in the economy for a generation. I would be, I would be investing in this. I wouldn't pick winners and losers the way that Kathleen suggests. I wouldn't say, I'm going to build a program that gives this number of companies this much money. I would use tax instruments, I would use tax policy, but I would really say, and nobody wants to do this, right? I worked the finance for years. The finance bureaucrats will say, no, 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 no. Don't create a tax benefit that benefits particularly those that employ youth. But I would do it, I would goose the system, and I would make it easier and less costly for private sector to hire youth. Kathleen, bring down your budget. A finance minister who doesn't take the issue of youth unemployment seriously is, is foolish. Why? Because it's going to have an impact on our health system, it's going to have an impact on our later economy. Um, youth uh, who are unemployed, who don't get integrated into the economy quickly after graduation from college or university or high school, um, suffer more depression and other health impacts, they have to address it. So yes, as finance minister, I would address it. How I would do so is I would invest in companies through tax credits um, uh, where, where companies that hire and make new hires and hold on to that hire a small business that makes a hire and holds on to that hire for one year gets a $4,500 tax rate. That's something that our, our party has put forward in the past. I myself am a beneficiary of a youth employment strategy program. You know, well, what was it, 20 years ago I uh, received an internship through the government and I benefited greatly from that and it saddens me greatly that today those internships are now being sunsetted. They're not available to the students of today to get the experience, the international experience they need to actually compete in the job market. So investing in our youth through training and internship opportunities, investing in businesses that actually hire and hold on to those hires to deserve that tax credit is what I would do. Sounds like a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to go You know what? But just to react to that before you do, sir, uh, is that no, it would be a lot less than the 6% corporate tax cut that the government, the Conservative government, has currently given to cor corporations who are actually sitting on a half trillion dollars uh, of money. Corporations. That is just sitting there. So corporations do hire people, and hiring people creates employment. But to, to the question, uh, Alan's question, I think it's important to go all BNA, British North America Act. Sorry to bring you back to history. Uh, it's the 
provinces that have the first responsibility on education. And I think where I finance, Minister, I would do what the gov current government has done with health care, which is to ensure that there is stable funding going to the provinces. Because it all starts, I believe, and I think we probably agree with this, on the, on the education system that exists and the quality of that education system. I think then there are other areas. Scott talked about a, a couple of them, but one we haven't talked about, and one is a big one in this country, is Aboriginal training, Aboriginal mm -hmm. youth and training. Uh, I think we have uh, both a responsibility and an opportunity there, because one of the challenges that we're facing, we haven't talked about as it relates to this issue, uh, are the looming labor shortages in this country. The mm -hmm. opportunities are coming. Are we? Uh, cha cha training and uh, equipping people the right way to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. And we can't be blind to the demographic problem we have in this country.